the fabulous startup that you've got going. Do you want to tell me a bit about why the story behind your startup, why you put it together? Absolutely. So um, my name is Caroline Gohn, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of The Labor League. And we really are creating the generation-defining career community for mm -hmm. women. And um, you know that came out of a sort of personal experience um, coming into the workforce in the, during the recession. And you know we're really creating a product that addresses the needs that we had ourselves and that our broader generation has based on the research. Fabulous, fabulous. Um, so I led up our um, investment round, and we actually haven't taken venture funding. We um, raised an angel round um, with very carefully chosen investors from the beginning. And one thing that I think really set us apart and worked for us was being very cognizant of the, the kinds of thought partners that we wanted involved in our round. So up front, before it became about a specific person, right, we sat down and we thought to ourselves, okay, how many investors do we think we would like to involve? What are the different skill sets and backgrounds of those people? Um, you know, do we want a media expert? Do we want a women's community expert? Do we want a technologist, right? And who are the people who not only have those skill sets, but are extremely passionate about the same, you know, the same approach that we have for our own company? And, um, you know, we reached out to those specific people and we shared our motivations with them and we were very careful to share our end state vision as well as the ways in which we thought we were going to go there in a very tactical way so that you know it's really tough because when you're starting a company it's, it's chicken and egg right mm -hmm. you're not going to know 100 percent of what's going to happen yeah. at the point of your angel round yeah but you have to know enough about what success means for you mm -hmm. to be able to um get people bought into the journey. So it was sort of a delicate balance of buying people into the broader vision with a tactical way to get there, knowing that, full disclosure, that tactical way is going to shift, right, depending on audience feedback, depending on the circumstances that arise. Right. Um, and it was that journey and that dialogue that I think worked best for us mm -hmm. when we were engaging with individual angel investors. Mm -hmm. That sounds uh, very sane and a fabulous strategy. <laughs> Thanks. And I think probably will work better for you in the long run mm -hmm. as, as a company. And um, I was wondering, you obviously led the investing round, but I was wondering how it was for you, Amanda, mm -hmm. um, during that process, obviously, um, what part of the, the startup do you sort of take responsibility for? Definitely. So I'm Amanda Pouchot, and I am our founder, and I oversee our product and content strategy. So, right. um, aptly titled the Chief Innovation Officer, uh, right. leading innovation. Uh, I, it's, it's great because one of the, the really important things about finding a co-founder is making sure you have someone that you can trust. And a lot of times it's a, lot, it's a blind trust um, because we, you have to divide and conquer. You can't both do everything. And you have to trust that the other person is working just as hard as you. So, yes. when looking for a co-founder, it's, it's really important that you have the same work ethic. That is the most important thing, and that you both, you're putting your heart and soul into this product, and you, you're gonna have disagreements. You're, you know, that's how the best things happen is when you don't agree about something, and you, you come together and you find the best, you know, the best solution. And so, my role is really about making sure that we have the best solution to the problems that we're trying to attack. And I think one of the strong parts about both of us is that we attack problems in different ways, but we're very able to work together and come together and create what the best possible solution is. So um, I'm wondering too, if not the most important piece uh, as far as, I think that's fabulous um, feedback and information about choosing a co-founder. I think it's really mm -hmm. important for us to be aware of. But I'm wondering isn't the most important thing is that you would share the same values even more than the work ethic. And I yes. if, yeah. Obviously you're both on the same page and so you've brought your individual talents together and that's like awesome because like it's much more powerful than one person mm -hmm. can accomplish. But I, I think even that above the work ethic, would you agree with that? Absolutely. Um, I think that you know to really function as a team where the whole is greater than the sum of its parts, yes. you have to have that blind trust, as Amanda was saying. Yes. And I really believe that that's rooted in values. And we view work ethic as one of the main components of those values, but they're obviously interpersonal values. They're obviously professional values. And all those things together, I think once you match those, you know, I really believe that if you have the will to learn something, you're going to learn it. 
So a more successful relationship long term is not necessarily a relationship where everybody's skills are diametrically opposed in the most complementary way possible and every, everything's hunky-dory. It's about the mindset because the evolution of that relationship is going to be dependent on the values of those two people over time. You've obviously thought, this, thought about this quite a bit. Yes. It's fabulous. It's really <laughs> great information to share with other women yeah. and um, female entrepreneurs. And I'm wondering, um, I did hear that you had some fabulous women behind you in, the, in your investment rounds. Do you want to briefly share who, who they are and, um, and how that was? meeting those mentors? Sure, absolutely. So we were very fortunate that um, we found real sponsors through our angel round, and I think that was the biggest surprise for us. Mm. You don't really come into a round, especially as a first-time entrepreneur, and expect mm. that you're going to find those people. You can actually call your mentors, mm. you can, who you can text message with questions, who will you know, video chat you if, if they're across the world and you need help. And um, you know, we're very fortunate that we had women like Gina Biancini, and you know, we had someone like Cheryl Sandberg basically sponsor us and wow. um, put her name behind us, or someone wow. um, like Susan Line on the East Coast, or Fran wow. Hauser. I mean, we yesterday we were um, on a panel at Facebook, and um, Clara um, uh, from Hearsay Social, who's an incredible Clara Shade, yeah. yes, yeah. who's an incredible yeah. example, um, you know, said you need to take time to take a step back when you're starting a company okay. and celebrate what you've accomplished because it's a series of sprints that look like a marathon from the outside and sometimes you lose sight of what's happening when you're in it. Yes. And I really, really feel that way about these incredible women. If I, you know, I think back to six months ago and when I didn't know any of these people and how much of an influence they are on my life today and it's incredible that yes. that's happened. Yes. And, you know, I... I really believe that cultivating those relationships, and it goes back to the idea of thought partnership, engaging as thought partners is really the best thing that we can do. Such a key piece. And would you have any advice for women that might be in the same place you were six months ago, looking to um, find that financing and the right thought uh, mentors to work with? Would you have any advice, either of you? Both sure. We, yeah. Um, <laughs> we both have I plenty think, of advice. Yes. Lots and lots of advice. Uh, I think the most important thing is to really think through your business broadly and to dream big enough. Like that's that's what we've learned is you're really only constrained by how big you can dream okay. and really understand, yes, my dreams are this big, but then identify steps on how to get there and goals and break it down into phases or break it down into, okay, we got to get this first and then we can go there. And also test. Testing, testing, testing. That's been one of our strongest things that mm. we've been able to do is take what we've learned from our mm. users, from our community, mm. and really discover what what others want mm. and then be able to take that information back and say, okay, we know this will work because we've tested it. And that, I think, gives us a lot of credibility when we speak with advisors and investors and mentors who want to get involved. Right, right. Do you have any advice at all for women? Absolutely. I think that, you know, the fact that we're able to relate to each other so well, which I see women do physically so often in, you know, personal settings, is a big, big strength when it comes to um, involving investors. Because at the end of the day, your investors are people, and they're people who are taking a risk to stand alongside you and approaching them with humility and always keeping them sort of updated and in the loop and having them feel part of the team is, I think, something that you know, needs to be done from the beginning. You set a tone at the beginning of the company that sets the standard for that culture with the investors. And um, I, I mean, one of my one of my mentors actually um, told me at the beginning of the round when I was a little nervous about speaking to some of these people, right? Um, everybody's a person. The person you're facing is a person too. Try to think about what is it about what you're doing that resonates with their lives. What, you know, what is it about your vision that you think is going to inspire them? Because it's different for each person. And figure out what that is, and then really talk about that. And in the process of doing that, you need to understand the person across the table from you, and you need to be really empathetic to them. And you need to, in order to do that, you've got to be humble. Because if you're, if you're filling up the room, there's no space for them. So one, <laughs> one of the things that I learned from mm -hmm. video interviewing VCs and angels and mm -hmm. founders was that a lot of VCs said that a lot of men actually don't use that technique. They actually um, are, act like superstars and over uh, extend themselves and um, 
talk so big, you know, that probably a lot of it's more puffed up than actually mm -hmm. substantial. So this is a really different technique, but then I can see that you girls are really starting to explore, like being pioneers really, mm -hmm. along with a lot of other female entrepreneurs, pioneering new ways of going about this, rather than recreating the old ways that um, men traditionally have, have led the, the storm. So, you know, congratulations to both Thank of you. you. And you're both so inspiring, and I'm sure that your platform will inspire many people to come. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you.